thank you. Uh, it starts. <laughs> Funny. Uh, I never use pictures, and I just explained that will be difficult because I just start talking and then, oh, there's all of a sudden a picture, and what was the story to this picture? And normally it's just uh, after three quarters of an hour or what they say, I just stop. They say, now you have to stop. So this is for me new, the pictures and everything. So, but I start where, where I was introduced with, with the scrap wood cupboard in our new place, but it's the, the original scrap wood cupboard m made for my degree in 1990. And uh, I got that degree and I started producing afterwards my furniture and we did everything ourselves. So we produced it, we distributed it, we even sold it to our own clients. So from the beginning, we, I didn't only design, but I also uh, manufactured, did the things in, in the beginning with my own hands and uh, even uh, made the publicity, everything we did. And we still do. And this is a drawing of that cupboard which went into the workplace. And before uh, we had a copier, so you can see what the result of that was. Now, now it's forbidden to bring uh, an original into the workplace. And one of those drawings once at, uh, at uh, Eastern Breakfast 1993, I was having breakfast with my wife and I said, I'm going to do a publicity campaign. And she started laughing while she was eating, so all the food was around the drawing like this. And uh, she said, you're, you're earning less than, uh, uh, well, it was minus one euro an hour at that moment. So how are you going to make a publicity campaign? I said, well, that's simple. At that moment, uh, interior magazines came up. So we had all of a sudden like 20 new interior magazines and they didn't have content. So I thought if, if they don't have content and I make something, it must be logical or, or self uh, saying that, that they take what we make. So after what, half a year, we were 10 times in one magazine, 20 times in one magazine, 17 times, and it never stopped. And we never gave one euro for publicity. And after a while, because they did so, so much uh, attention from, uh, how do you call it, redactional attention, so they wrote about us. They said, they called, and you have to pay for, for a page also. We said, no, we put our money in new stuff. That's also important for you. And, and uh, the advertisement from, for, from other companies. So we, uh, we went on like that all the time, and we just make stuff. We like that, and we get a lot of publicity with it. So it was a good strategy, and it helped us uh, uh, getting our... Uh, name, uh, my name, which was also a decision at that moment. Uh, we used my name, uh, Pete Hein Eck, for everything. So if I give an interview or a lecture like now, or we manufacture, or everything is Pete Hein Eck. And at that moment, Philip Stark was, was coming into, you know, uh, in, into our minds and some others, but uh, they were more important than the manufacturers. So we thought if we do everything under one name, it becomes a brand anyhow. So, so that was also a decision. This is my uh, office like it is now, and uh, it's, a, it's a sort of glass bowl. Um, it's transparent. And one of the major things of my exam was not uh, the product, but was a little text which I tried to s uh, look up uh, on, on in our basement and in the attic everywhere, but I couldn't find it. And there is a text on it where, um, where which says, if you want to do well, you have to feel like a fish in the water, which is a Dutch saying, but probably everybody understands it. And so you have to create an environment which is positive and stimulating, and you don't know exactly what will be the result of this uh, uh, environment, but at least you know that you do the best thing possible. So that's, in fact, what we did. We, did, uh, we made uh, like a fish bowl, and the new premises is like an aquarium, but it's the same. It's our own, our own environment. And it's important, uh, the, the start is that we did everything ourselves, which is the opposite of specialization. So everybody specializes. If you study, you go and be a designer. But we decided to do everything. And uh, there are a, a few themes in, in my life, uh, so it's not my career, but it's in my life, which are important. That's, that's the not specialize, because I like to do everything, and I think it's also uh, clever to do everything ourselves. Um, and the other thing is that you have to do what you like. And it seems to be diff uh, uh, logic. Everybody said it, or almost everybody said it this during the lectures I heard today. But if you turn it around, and that happens often, if you do something you don't like and you get successful, you have a huge problem. Because you do every day, you have to do what you don't like. 
So, and one of the first things I decided, decided after a, a, a disaster of a commission, well, you see the brown doors and the drawers in the, on the right of the picture, that's a, a stereo cupboard for CDs and, and all kinds of old-fashioned machines and so on. And the funny thing is, I, I made it for friends, and you, know, you never have to work for friends, everybody knows it, but I did it. And so I made a, 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 a piece of furniture which was m way too uh, cheap, much too uh, much work, so everything was, uh, was uh, I did uh, the best effort ever, and they didn't want to pay me, so I said, well, I take it with me, and I still have it with me, it's in my office, and it's the, it's the, st the stereo cupboard, I call it. And uh, the funny thing is, at that moment, I decided I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, what I do is I make those things which I like, which are important, which are for me important and stimulating. And uh, combined with the fact that I created and I was creating my own environment, this was uh, the start of uh, uh, what, what I'll show next, next after this. <laughs> this is uh, an interior we made and it, it's, in fact it's about the copper uh, lampshades, which, uh, which has two stories. And one of the Major stories is the lamp right above, it's copper. Everybody thinks copper is ugly, at least in Holland. Everybody thought when I introduced it, copper is ugly. And we, had, uh, we have a company which is good in making new stuff. In the, I'm, I think about something and the guys I have, and uh, we, we, we are able to produce it. And then we have something new. So you think, well, that's good, there's something new. Everybody's waiting for something new. And we found out quite early that if you have something new, Everybody likes it except the people who, are, who have to sell it for you. Because they are selling the things they are already selling, not the new stuff, because they're not selling new stuff. So I had like uh, conversations with our dealers, like, I have a couple lamp. Yes, yeah, 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 you have a couple lamp. And I said, well, uh, and it sells. A lot of customers come, you know, we had five customers a day at that moment, or a week even, and they bought the couple lamps. So we knew that at least that there was the, 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 the our customers liked it. But the, our dealer, they, they, they sold aluminium, stainless steel and glass lamps. So they said, well, we sell aluminium, stainless steel and glass lamps. I said, yes, I know, that's because you have them. So if you don't put the copper lamp in, you won't sell it. And they said, no, no, uh, but, and so the conversation was all the time, well, well it's, it's like a comedy. And, and in the end they said, I don't like copper lamps. And that's the other problem with people who are in retail. Uh, they, li they like what they sell <laughs> because they're living from that. So, so it's a mechanism which is very strong. And even the most uh, avant-gardistic shops uh, who are, who are rep representing us, they didn't s uh, buy the mo our, our new stuff. So we, we invent or I make 10 or 20 new products and they take the one which is almost similar to the ones wh who are successful already which makes it almost impossible to do what you like and to do what you're good at. So we needed a new place. Uh, this is one of the major reasons which occurred to me very early that we needed a place where people come and see what we're actually making. I heard a lot of people in the, in the uh, lectures before talking about production and uh, we produce ourselves. So we have uh, in our premises, there are 80 people working, more than 80, and, um, and they are, most of them are producing. But if you produce in a traditional way, it's almost impossible to make a, a, an affordable product. Um, and also, you make something which is very easy to copy somewhere else. So what you do is not specific and it's not competitive. So what, what I thought is if you put things together, and it's again something which what I like very much, you know, so I, I did what I liked and it was also convenient. We're now in, the, in a former Philips building and uh, Philips made huge quantities. So if they want to sell uh, or develop a new lamp, they sell 100,000 or uh, 200,000 and they, they are able to invest in a mold and each 10 seconds there's a lamp coming out. But we sell one lamp or two or five or 10, but it, more than 10 is almost, uh, well, that's a real success. So <laughs> if, you, if you sell more than 10 or about 10, you can't, uh, uh, you can't have a, a, a big or huge investment. So you have to use different techniques. And what we do in general, and which you can see in almost every product, is that it's, it's a, a combination of, mat uh, the material is always very important. I will 
talk to about that later on. But it's always put together in a very uh, simple uh, and understandable manner and way. So you can see how it's put together with the, you know, with the little blind, blind rivets. It's copper. You, if you take a piece of paper and, uh, and scissors, you can actually uh, put it together yourself. So everybody understands it. Everybody sees the detail. Everybody sees that somebody did an effort to make it. And this should be instead of a, a problem, you know, in the first place it was a problem because it's not in one second. This should be the reason why people buy it. So it's, it's half hour work to put a lamp together and this, this specifically, this half hour should be the, the reason for people to buy it. It's, it's the, the effort you did and you have to show it. And that's the difference with a lot of other designers, which is n not bad or something, but normally you design something and afterwards you try to produce it. And I always start with the way it's produced or it's, it's, a, a, it's one story. So when we have like a chair and every, every, every product has a story like this, how it, how it, uh, how it was uh, made and designed and came to me uh, like an idea or something. And, uh, and every product is very tight and, you know, we make it and it has to be done in half an hour, in an hour, one and a half hour, everything. We calculate everything, we calculate every product, we calculate every employee, so it's very tough at our place. And if you do that, of course, you, you, you produce in a different way than, uh, than uh, that you have time enough. So, like this chair, if you if you produce like the, the, the front leg of one of the legs, you take a huge beam and you cut all the legs at once for a, a series because the chairs are selling very well. So we make series of 50 or 100, you know, that's our maximum series, otherwise everybody gets insane. And uh, it, do it also doesn't matter if you make 200, it doesn't speed up because it's, it's, it's designed to be produced in small quantities, so a big quantity doesn't make any difference. But if you produce like that and you, and you start uh, keeping all the little pieces from uh, wood uh, and you put them into a shelf and remember there's a piece of wood which might be a lack for the next series, you can understand that it's impossible to make this chair in one and a half hour. So we throw away materials after, after all. And uh, what I do, if, if people come to our place, which is real, so you can come to our place, I collect all kinds of materials. So I don't throw, if I, I, if I have the faintest idea that it might be a product, I don't throw it away. I just pile it up until the idea comes and then we try to make something. So, but in fact, in 2000 or around 2000, I thought I'll turn it around. I, I, I just don't like the idea that labor is so expensive, so important. That, uh, that you throw uh, away a piece of material which is, which is good enough to be a leg, but because we're so expensive, it's, it's, it's waste. So, in fact, it's not waste. So, I turned it around and I made a product. This was the first product, a stool. And I turned the world around. So, I said, um, labor costs nothing, material is worth the fortune. It's a little bit like the future because uh, mankind is breeding like rabbits. And uh, material is, is, uh, is uh, vanishing uh, equally on, only the other way around. So, so I thought, well, I, make, uh, I, I start making products, piling them up. You know, I, I've always been fascinated about, about uh, collecting and people, not, when there was no television, everybody was putting a lot of time and effort in, in making collections and idiot, uh, idiot products were like every evening uh, 10 square centimeters, you know. So I always have been fascinated about the fact that people are putting an enormous amount of time in a product. So the stool was the first product I made and afterwards we made a table of leftovers. And one of the guys who made it, he came to me and he said, Pete, how, I'm go how am I going to finish it? And I said, well, just lacquer it 10 times. So he started lacquering it and sending it and lacquering it and sending it and lacquering it, which is an enormous amount of wood, like a boat, which was also the idea, you know, a boat, also a sort of work for a monk. And he was finished, the table was finished, and it was wonderful. You know, it was like it was glazed instead of lacquered. And because all the different pieces, it was like, like, like it was tiles instead of wood. And uh, all the leftovers were, went in, you know, it didn't, didn't matter how big or small, we could use everything. We had the table, but it was enormously expensive. So it was 30,000 guilders at, at, at this time, it's uh, 13,500 euros approximately. So it was, it was the most expensive product we've ever sold uh, or made, we didn't sell it. And, <laughs> and then I think the next picture is the surface. Yeah, I remembered, so I see, this is the tiles. And, um, so I thought, 
uh, we had a fair we, because we also tried to, you know, to, to show what we were doing. And I thought, well, it's too expensive, but I'll take it. It's like state of the art. You know, it's our state of the art. And I, it's, at least I can tell a story which I really like. And I presented it at that fair. And it was there at 8 o'clock in the morning. And, and it was open to be opened at 9. And a guy came along and he said, I want to buy that table. I said, ah, do you, are you sure? Because it's really expensive. And he said, yes, I'm quite sure. And I said, well... It's, uh, it's 30,000 guilders, and, um, and, uh, uh, and do you, uh, yeah, I would still like to have it. So I said, well, if you drink a cup of coffee and you come back and you still want to have it, you're allowed to buy it. So he went for a very quick coffee, came back in two minutes, and he bought the table. And two hours later, two guys were quarreling who was going to buy this table. So I could have sold three in one morning. And this product was the most expensive product we've ever made. And I was thinking from that moment on, and I think it took me four years, so it's quite a long, long time, which is often in my case that it takes a lot of time to understand why something works out uh, after all. And, and then I thought, it's not so strange that if I'm annoyed about the fact that we throw away materials, and, I, and I'm annoyed about the fact that, uh, that it's because labor is so expensive, and that there is no attention in those products. You know, if you go in a, in, a, in a shopping mall and you see a product, you don't see who made it, you don't see how it's made, you don't know, uh, uh, you, you know one thing, it's made as efficient as possible, and for the rest you don't know anything. And here you see something which is done with an enormous amount of time. There is, in fact, the only value is the time which is in it. There is, there, there is no value at all because the rest is waste. And everybody is hurrying and running. You know, everybody has no time to do the, their things the way they liked. And that's not such a problem if you're uh, industrialized. You know, if you make a car without attention and it's a good car or a stereo or a screen, it doesn't matter. It does, it, you know, it's even nice that the television is very cheap in compared to 40 years ago. So we, we, we created a lot of uh, wealth and uh, prosperity by being efficient. But if you go on on that thought, and you throw materials away, it's not so efficient at all. And if you think a little bit further, and you say, uh, try to explain to a child, one and one is two, and it, the child doesn't understand it, you have to do it again, and perhaps in a different way. So at the moment, time is the, is the effort, time is the, the profession, then it becomes a problem. You can't, you, you know, if you find a way to clean up and feed, and, and what else uh, an old woman needs in a, uh, when a nurse comes on in three minutes, you know, I can't go like, a, like, a, like, a, like a machine, and then she's, she's, she's dropped in the bed, and everything is done in a proper way. She won't be happy, even if everything is done, you know, she needs time. So we have a society which is being more efficient from, uh, yeah, it's, it's mankind, but we, perhaps we're too much thinking about efficiency and not about the fact that attention is also a value on itself. And I think we're at the moment, the crisis is a good moment, that everybody is, is uh, reinventing itself and uh, reinventing processes. And we have one problem, we have two problems in terms of uh, uh, what, what we're heading now, is we don't have time and we don't have sources. So, so we're, we're scarce, uh, we have a lot of scarcity, I think it's called. So. Um, this is, is this a product of the same mother or father, or it's a brother or sister from the previous picture. You don't understand it, perhaps. But it's called the 99.13% cupboard. And it's called like that because there is less than 1% left over by if we produce it. And the 1% is also included the little holes for the blind rivets. So if we produce this cupboard and you, and you take all the leftovers, it's only one hand. Which, is, which remains after production. And uh, it's, of course, it's exactly the same uh, story as using the leftovers, you know, making something without leftovers or making something of leftovers. It's both that, uh, about respect of the material and the technique and the craftsmanship, which is in every product. Those are the 97.6% cupboards. And they're called like that because this is a medium size and the same amount of material uh, represents a bigger loss, a dramatically bigger loss because it's almost three times more loss than the big cupboard. But it's the same hand of material. And it's in the, this is the first picture of the whole of our new premises which we bought and it's done before we changed it. This is what we bought. So it went a little bit wrong, you might say. So if you're a designer and you specialize, 
you don't need uh, 11,000 square meters. So this is about 11,000 square meters. And the office is somewhere in, in, the, in the high building. It's only five by five meters. So the rest is all to do the rest of, of all the things I would like to do. And the funny thing is we didn't need 11,000 square meters. We needed a place where we could put the production facility in the heart of the building. And this was the only building which was with which it was possible. This was uh, during the restoration, and uh, so the only light which was coming in was the light because the roof was broken, but everything was closed. Even the, the windows to the, to, uh, to the outside were, were painted. We put more than 3,000 square meters insulated glass, and uh, we got a very good price for the, for the paint, but when we uh, c uh, calculated it times 20,000, it was not so good after all. So, so it was a problem. This is the same place, and this is now the entry, the entrance. And uh, we used a lot of old materials to to make the new place. So so the windows are from the buildings around the ours, which were t torn down. So we used uh, uh, enormous facades and so on, and uh, and it was like an uh, idiot story or like that. And this is the shop. So, because we wanted to have, in fact, we wanted to have six or 7,000 square meters, so we got 4,000 more because of the fact that the workplace had to be in the heart of the bu building. So, instead of selling a few items around, around the counter, it became a shop, and instead of uh, a painting above a sofa, it became a gallery, and instead of a lunchroom, it became a restaurant, and working with young designers ended up in renting uh, uh, ateliers, and we even made an event space, which. Uh, will come on later, but um, so the building was like uh, all the ideas we had exploded. And one of the funny thing is if you do something, you know, it doesn't matter what, something will happen. And that's, that, that's, uh, this is a, an example of it because we needed to have the interior, which is a sort of accidental, you know, a lot of things are accidental in my uh, career until now, which is quite nice. We needed an interior and instead of designing also the interior, I, I thought, well, we just buy industrial uh, uh, furniture because it looks like it was there uh, when we found, when we bought the building. And after a few months after we were open, we put a little price on it. We thought, well, maybe it sells. And we, that is the best product in our shop is the furniture to sell the products. So, <laughs> and, and we buy it from, the, from all over Europe. So this is the workplace. It is the same place where the 97.3% cupboards were made. And uh, the first thing I drew were the, the machines. And you see the transparency is... is uh, so it was totally dark. You needed a, a lantern or a lamp to walk around when we bought it. But after putting the glass in and making it white, because we had two flavors in colors, it's dark green or dark brown. So uh, now it's all white or gray and, and there's a lot of light. And the transparency is quite important, of course. That's because if you put the workplace in the middle, you know, like the, the opposite of what you normally have with the product, you don't know where it's made, how it's made. In our case, you come in, you see where, you see where it's actually designed, you see where, it, where people are calling and taking care of the distribution, you see where it's produced, you see the storage, you see the showroom. So you're standing next to the product, you see everything from the product until, uh, until you, uh, you are actually if you buy it, you, you, have, you are part of the whole process, which is quite rare in a world that bankers don't even know their own product. Even if you ask it, they don't understand what they're actually selling. And in our case, you, you, you don't need to be a professor to understand every bit, bit of it, which it has been, it's a coincidence, because we did everything ourselves, it becomes transparent, and because it's transparent, it's a very actual, you know, it's a, a, thing, a theme which is very, uh, at this moment, a very important theme. So this is the showroom with, uh, with, uh, with pieces of art, because if we have an exhibition and it doesn't work, uh, it doesn't fit, we just put it somewhere else. So it's, it's all the time going through the building. This is the, the showroom, and next to it, there are the machines where the 99.13% cupboard is made, and to the left in the corner you see it standing. So, so you actually are uh, seeing both uh, uh, worlds together. And this is the the bar of the restaurant, and uh, the bar is made of, uh, of uh, uh, old tubes which were in the, in the factory when we bought it. And we had to take out like uh, 20 or 30 containers, so the whole ceiling was filled with tubes when we bought it. And I, I kept one to make this bar in the restaurant, and uh, 
so when we finished everything, we made a bar and we had still a container left because one container is much more than a bar. And this chair is sort of making that story. At a certain moment, you know, like one month before we, we, uh, we uh, finished the project, the money was uh, finished. So <laughs> we didn't have any money. The, the bookkeeper came to me and said, Pete, uh, we don't have money anymore. But it was exactly one month, so, it, so if we went on, nobody would know. You know, there's one month of paying afterwards. So I thought, well, we just finish and see how the problem solves later on. And um, so this was not the best, the best day in my life, I must say. But the funny thing is, at the same day, I, I uh, thought uh, about this idea, about piling up the pipes. And, uh, and also, uh, I thought about the whole presentation of Milan at that same moment, which is the most important furniture fair in the world. So, so uh, it was a very bad day, but when I thought about this piece of furniture and the whole presentation of Milan, I felt much better. And uh, only a few days later, I thought that was a trick of myself. If you feel bad and you think about something nice, then your day is, after all, it's not so bad at all. So we had a lot of people talking about drugs on to now, but my drug is to think about something nice if th things go bad. For Art Basel, where we were also were invited, I made the, the, the construction uh, uh, pipe or tube set, and it's also made of the same container. We still have some, most of it is sold, because the funny thing is, it was an idea at that moment, but later on during the, fair, the, the Milano Fair and Art Basel, we sold it. Uh, quite a lot of these pieces, so we sold it to Lebanon, to Beirut, to, uh, to, Beirut is Lebanon, to uh, New York, Geneva, everywhere. So, so we sold a lot, so it's actually the idea at that moment also solved a financial problem because, uh, because it's, uh, you know, if you sell your ID, you get something. And the upholstery of those uh, pieces, that's the, the sunscreens from the buildings around us, so it's the uh, original Philips color, so the, and it's outdoor also. <laughs> So we, we're now in the, in the gallery. This is a work of uh, Jan van der Ploeg. And each time when we work with the, the artist, something happens. And Jan van der Ploeg is, uh, is makes wall paintings. But I didn't, he made the first wall painting and we had to repaint it because the co there was a new uh, artist coming in the same place. So I said, well, this is once and for never. I will never do in my place a wall painting and then uh, uh, paint it again. So we have to think about something which you can paint and we can keep. So I, I thought I just tried to make him think about that and he came up with the idea of the boxes and we made the boxes and he painted it. So now it's a, a wall and painting but it's, it's a, also an object. It's like a hybrid between our, both our worlds. And so when the exhibition is finished, which is almost now, we take it out and we put it somewhere else and you can make all kind of different pieces of art with it. And uh, the funniest story about that, uh, the collaboration between artists and, uh, and, and ourselves as a, as a gallery owner is this, uh, this set, this, those wooden men. It's the work of Tom Klaassen, who is a very well-known Dutch uh, uh, artist and he makes very stubborn statues. And he wanted to make the, the he, he sold two weeks before the, the exhibition was, he sold his, uh, his, his wooden men. So I said, Is it, are we allowed to make a new series? And he said, yes, it's okay. So I made a drawing, I gave it to the guys in the workplace. I called Tom and I said, please come because it's your wooden man. And he came and he, everything was wrong, so we did it again. And I was, uh, when the opening was there, I was in my car going for holidays. And I thought it's quite strange that you actually, as a gallery owner, that you make the art for the artist. But in our place, because we didn't specialize, we do everything ourselves, a lot of things happen and it's even get, got worse because we have the new place and we have a restaurant. We have so many different skills and people around the place under one roof, literally, and we don't have to think about who's going to pay who because everything is, is on one owner. So we have, at this moment, a very nice uh, story going on with a lot of different qualities coming together. Uh, this is the event space, which is one of the best things, also accidental, but uh, in terms of turnover, one of the best places we have. Uh, this is a gallery of Lotti, my a former student, who I, uh, I really wanted to have her back with me. So I, I said, well, if you come, you can choose which space you get and you can have your own uh, atelier. This has become a major uh, uh, product uh, and more or less it's a metaphor for the whole company and it's a design from 1993 uh, made around old glass 
I found the glass um, uh, at the Phillips dump, at the lumber yard, and I wanted to make uh, a cupboard with all square glass. So this one is, has, is not exactly square, but the design was, was all square. And if you want to make that, you have to make profiles square, and if you cut out around this square profile, you can put the same uh, size on the top, on the, on the bottom, on the sides, uh, everywhere. And uh, the only thing I designed was the little clip. And, uh, and we could make, like with that uh, amount we had found, we could make five cupboards. And after the five cupboards, uh, I thought, well, we just buy the glass and we sell more. And it was impossible because the glass was more expensive than we were actually selling the cupboard for. In 1990 or 90, in 2000, we bought a, a, a computerized router and I thought, well, perhaps we can do it now. And uh, so we were able to make the wood more efficient and also more beautiful. And I, we, we called with uh, the, manif the, the supplier of the glass and we got the 70 to 80 percent discount. And all of a sudden, the same cupboard was possible. And we adjusted the size to the Philips cupboard, to another cupboard. So all together, after 10 years, the same ID suddenly became very fruitful. And since then, we actually sell each, each week one of those cupboards. And this is a very simple story, but it tells a lot about the fact that we grew like we grew. Because if, if I would have been a, uh, a specialized designer, I would have never known that, uh, that we bought the machine. And I would never have known that the glass was so ex uh, cheap in the meanwhile. And if I would have known, I wouldn't have known that the size of another cupboard was so successful. So by doing everything under one roof and under one brand name and under one, in one company, instead of going to one company, to that company, to that company, but keeping it in the one company. After 10 years, we, have a we had a product which suddenly starts selling, and after 18 years, it's, it's still selling. And if you c calculate all the benefits of our first IDs, which are still valuable for us, it's, it's, a, it's a major, major difference if you compare it to the, the very short-term uh, specialized uh, society we have where you, each time you give your specialization, but then you go back. You know, you don't keep your, your, the, the, the effort you do, you lose it at the moment you, go, you, you close the door. And we keep everything in our company. We never thought about that, but because of this cupboard and this story, I start thinking about the fact that we made a decision in 1993 and we're still having a lot of benefit from, from that uh, decision. This is, a, this is, in fact, it's the story, it's the same story. It's a story about creating your own place. So, a lot of people come to us and they are uh, uh, astonished about the size and they say, how is it possible so big, so ambitious and so this and so that? And I say, I don't give a shit about the size. The only thing what really matters is the fact that it's my place where I can do what I do and, what I, and each day I go there, I'm happy. And I, if I go back, I'm even more happy. If that's the case and I don't know actually what will come out, it doesn't matter. So we have a culture where you always want to think about the result or a, a goal ahead. But for me, the goal was to have a place to, be, to do what I like and, and to be what I like and to work with people I like. And this is a, a little shed, tree trunk shed, uh, at, the, at, the, at the side of a field. And uh, it's made for a, a writer and he writes here. And he doesn't need 11,000 square meters, but he's still doing what he really likes. And that's for me the, the, the real story is that, you know, if you feel like a fish in the bowl, it doesn't matter if it's a fish bowl, an aquarium or even the sea. It's about the fact that you create your own environment, which is stimulating and, uh, and then uh, which is a, quite a different thought. If you don't think about the result, you know, if you don't want to have a tomato plant in a, in a piece of in, a, in the sand, but if you create, create uh, a fertile soil, something will come up. And we have the idea that we want to know what comes up and, and we put a lot of effort in, in making a tomato plant in, in sand and add all kinds of things and a lot of energy. But in the end, it's much more fruitful to create a good environment and then see what happens. And we had a lot of accidental successes and, uh, and probably it's not so accidental. If you create the situation, things happen and, th and good things happen if you create a good environment. So that's what I wanted to finish with, with this little house, which is the same as our factory. Thank you very much. <laughs>